Hi guys. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to make this Oreo roll cake that I made the other day. Um, I posted it on this group on Facebook and um, I've been getting a ton of people asking for the recipe, um, which I don't really have a recipe. I just kind of used um, a cake mix that I modified from um, this old cooking light cookbook that I used to use. I used to love that cookbook and um, it's obviously not vegan. So the recipe in there calls for like butter and buttermilk and um, a bunch of shit vegans don't eat. So I just use rice milk and applesauce in place of that. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to make the cake and then I'm going to show you how to roll it and make the frosting. So here we go. Okay, one last thing before we get started. Um, there was a lot, well not, not a lot, um, but there was quite a few people concerned about the um, bone char in Oreos, in the processing of sugar, um, and so they're not actually Oreo brand. I used um, Newman's Own, which uses organic flour and organic sugar, which if it's organic sugar, in order to be um, what is the word, um, certified organic, they can't use bone char. It, it, um, it disqualifies them for the organic certification. So if you're getting sugar that's organic, there's no bone char in it. So if you are buying a product that has organic sugar in it and it looks like there's no animal products in it, but you're kind of worried about the sugar, um, as long as it's organic, it's fine. It's actually vegan. So um, just a little side note to put all of that to rest. Um. Okay guys, so for the cake mix, we are going to need a half a cup of rice milk or whatever non-dairy milk that you have. And it's totally okay if it has like a vanilla sweetener in it um, because it's a sweet food, so that's fine. Um, and then a third of a cup of cacao, cocoa powder? Cocoa powder, cacao powder. Um, it's this. This is what I'm using. You guys can use whatever brand you want. It's just uh, chocolate powder basically before they fill it with a bunch of sugar and animal products. That's it. Ingredients, that. So go for something similar, whatever you can find. Then you need a cup of flour and this is a teaspoon of baking soda with an eighth of a spoon of, an eighth of a spoon. Um, I actually didn't measure it out, but if you're gonna get technical, it's an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And some applesauce, I just get these little snack pack size ones because we don't really eat applesauce in our house all that much. Um, and these are great, you just need half of it, but um, I don't measure that either, I just kinda dump some in. But those are great. And then two thirds of a cup of sugar and vanilla. So that's it, we're just gonna put it all in a bowl. Oh, and I totally forgot, you also need flaxseed. That's what this is. Um, it calls for a half a cup of egg substitute. How disgusting is that? Um, no thanks. So you just need, it's actually equivalent to two flax eggs, which if you've never made those before, um, they're great for stuff like this that you're baking in. Um, you just need two tablespoons of ground flax seed and six tablespoons of water. So to make a flax egg, it's technically one tablespoon of flax and three of water. So I like to start with this. And I think that was three, four, five, Six. Sorry, I can't talk and count at the same time. So just put that in there. And then I like to do the wet ingredients first. That way you can just mix it all together and then put the dry ingredients on top. So the vanilla, I don't really measure that. I don't really think it's that important to measure it. Um, so just some of that. Then just kind of whisk it together. Don't judge my janky whisk. This is the one my mom actually used to use when I was little. 
Uh, this is technically the whisk I learned how to cook with when I was quite literally like two years old. So some of that, then we're gonna dump in some of this applesauce in place of the butter. About half the container is about a half a cup. So some of that, then you can dump in the flour. I like to do it over the top. It kind of puts a barrier between the liquid and the other stuff you're gonna put in. And the salt and baking soda, which I don't like to just dump it in the middle. I like to just kind of dust it over the top of everything. Then the one third of cocoa powder. I think that's how you say it. And the two thirds cup of sugar. Yes, it's organic. Don't panic, y'all. Then you just whisk. So you don't need to go crazy, use a hand mixer, all that. Just whisk it together. And actually you can do this with a fork or a spoon. It doesn't have to be a whisk. Just make sure it's all well incorporated. And I mean, yeah, you could use a box mix, but it's, it's so easy. And the boxes tend to have more chemicals and just preservatives and I mean, I would assume that most of this is in your cupboard already. So, and I know it can be kind of risky because there's a lot of really crappy recipes online, but I kid you guys not, this one is legit. So, there we go. It's all mixed. And so the consistency you're going to want, and then we're going to bake it. So, I guess you could have been preheating your oven which would be on 350. So at this point, um, learn from my mistake. And before you get started, just preheat your oven to 350. Okay, so once you've mixed it, you're going to line a pan with parchment paper and you're going to just pour all the cake into it. Um, make sure that your pan is large enough where the cake is in a thin layer. So this one is a 17 and a quarter in length and I believe it is 11 and a half inches wide. Why those measurements? I don't know. I went to measure it and um, surprise, it's really fucking weird measurements, but whatever. So once it is in there, it's just going to look like, whoa. I have a really, really nice tripod, if you couldn't tell. Um, so you're just going to smooth it out until it's all the way on the sides and even, I guess. You could try to use something other than a spatula, but you're going to probably be pretty disappointed and irritated by the time it's done, um, unless you've got skills I don't know about. Spatulas are the best. If you don't have them, you, my friend, are missing out. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it doesn't have to come all the way to the edges and because um, it's just going to kind of flatten out in the oven anyways as it bakes. So don't fight with it too much. If you have OCD like I do, it's going to be hard not to, but um, it's whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just smooth it out the best you can to the edges and call it good. Yeah. All right. So it's going to look like this and it's going to be super thin, which is awesome because if it's too thick, it's not going to roll properly. So now I just made that worse. All right. So pop it in the oven and I'm going to time it now. So I can tell you guys how long to cook it for because I don't know. I don't, I don't use timers. I just kind of, um, I just can kind of smell it once it starts to be done. Uh, it's kind of weird, but, uh, all right, let's time it. Okay. In your pan, it has to have like a little ledge on it like this. Um, if you put it on a flat cookie sheet, you are going to have a mess on your hands. So for obvious reasons, it needs to have a little lip on there. So, all right, let's put this in the oven and I'll stop talking. 
Okay, so while the cake bakes, we're gonna make the frosting for the inside. And another disclaimer, um, this is not a health food. Just because it's vegan, just because it's organic, it's not fucking healthy. There is a shit ton of sugar in this. Um, and that's because it makes it taste good. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. We work with people and I swear to God, you tell them it's vegan and they instantly think it's healthy and it might as well just be grass or you tell them it's organic and, oh, it must be healthy. Um, no, it's not. So there's no oil technically in the cake but we make up for that in sugar and a little bit of vegan butter in the frosting and in these. Have you ever looked at the calories on these and the fat? Um, we eat these in one sitting in my house and there's only two of us. So um, they're not health food. So this is not a healthy recipe. So I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the sugar comments. Yeah, blah, blah. I don't care. We don't eat this all the time even though this is the second time I've made this this week, but that's for you guys. That's because you guys wanted the recipe. It's your fault, not mine. We don't normally eat this much cake in a week. Um, so let's do the recipe for the frosting. Okay guys, it's been about 13 minutes and we're gonna get a toothpick. I've already checked it once and it wasn't done. So you can use the same toothpick, just use the other side. Um, toothpick? Toothpick. It doesn't need to focus. You guys know what a fucking toothpick is. Poke it in the cake. If it's done, it'll come out clean. It has come out clean, but it refuses to focus. Lack of cooperation. All right. Take it out of the oven. And now it just needs to cool. So instead of leaving it in the pan, do you guys see how dark that pan is? Don't judge me. I bake potato wedges all the time. So my pan has been well loved. That's what a well loved pan looks like, not a dirty pan, okay? All right, so we're just going to slide this over just like so onto a cutting board. And we're just gonna let it cool. So you can see how thin it is. Just getting gant. But this is why it doesn't matter if it's perfect because this stuff you can just break off and it's fine. Super thin. And, okay, I'm gonna stop messing with it. Because if you play with it, when it's not cool, it will just crumble apart and tear. If you wait till it's cool, it literally just comes right off of here. Hence the fact we're using parchment paper. And this is what we roll it with. I think I already told you that. Um, telling you again. So, I'm gonna eat that. Pretty good. Don't judge my pan. Okay, frosting time. Because I lied to you guys when I said we're gonna make the frosting while it um, cooks, I uh, got distracted. So, we're gonna do it now. Vegan butter. Every vegan should have this on standby all the time. This shit tastes just like regular butter. This shit's legit. Cookies. Use organic. Use Oreos. I don't care. Use whichever ones you want. And powdered sugar. So this is where the fuck ton of sugar comes in. Sorry for my language, but it gets the point of crossed. Because, where's the one from last time? Well, last time I made this, this was full. And there is only that much left. So almost the entire thing of powdered sugar, but it's worth it, I promise. Um, and if you don't have powdered sugar, it's literally just cornstarch and sugar. It's like a cup of sugar and a tablespoon of cornstarch, you put it in the blender. Ta-da, powdered sugar. So if you wanna make your own, go for it. Then you're gonna need some form of non-dairy milk of your choice. A tiny bit of vanilla or not I'm actually probably just gonna well no I'll put it in put a little just like a splash it doesn't have to be a lot and this is actually pink Himalayan salt it's in a 
big giant glass jar because I buy it at Costco, but I don't want that big ass container on my counter. So big ass glass jar. All right. So I did about five Oreos, three, four, yeah, five Oreos. And you just need something to crush it with. I'm going to use my sprinkle jar and you're just going to smash them like so. Just crush them until you have a mixture that looks like this. So it's just like cookie dust. And it doesn't have to be um, all little small parts because trust me, when you find this little guy in the frosting in a bite of cake, you're gonna be real glad you didn't make it a pulverized little dust. Okay, so we're just gonna set that aside and I'm not gonna waste any. So with all of the little stuff that ended up on the bottom of this jar, which I'm going to wash, I promise as well as my hand. Um, so you're just gonna need another little bowl because you're gonna mix the frosting first, well, second after crushing that. But you're gonna mix the frosting and then you're gonna fold these guys in. So for the frosting, I'm gonna use up the rest of this bag and I don't have measurements for you guys. Um, so, I can open the bag good god all right um, I don't have measurements because I don't so you're just gonna have to follow my lead and just dump a bunch of stuff in the bowl because you really can't mess this frosting up unless you use too much liquid then you're just a goner and it will never ever recover you will just have sugar soup which not my thing. So bunch powdered sugar and I don't, I don't know, three, it's a pound and there was only a little bit left. So you guys figure out how much liquid, how much liquid, how many cups that is. I'm grabbing the liquid. Then you're just gonna add a little bit of non-dairy milk and you're gonna mix it with a whisk. I told you guys you're gonna want one. Well, shit, I can't refilm this. So spatula, not whisk. Um, I can't talk, sorry guys. And you're just going to mix it up and add some, mix it up and add some, some being liquid so that you don't do too much. So obviously that wasn't enough because it's not really doing anything. And a little more, like we're, we're talking like maybe two tablespoons at a time and it makes a huge difference. So don't go crazy. All right. It's probably all that we're gonna need. So just mix it all up. And once you get it like this, um, we are gonna add some more powdered sugar in there because even this is too much liquid. So, oh, and I forgot. So the butter, I don't measure this either. And usually like a buttercream frosting calls for like a stick of butter. That's disgusting. I don't care if it's vegan or not. That's just disgusting. So I'm just doing, which makes this easier to fold in anyways when you do it like this instead of just a big old stick of butter. Usually you would do like a mixer, but I don't know. It's maybe uh, like a tablespoon and a half of butter, vegan butter, just to clarify. I'll show you. Looks like that. That's it. It doesn't call for a lot. And then just a little bit of salt. Um, sounds weird, but I promise it, if sometimes it'll be like too sweet 
if you add a little bit of salt, it kind of balances that out. So it's, it's literally just like a pinch of salt. Just sprinkle a little bit of salt over the top and a splash of vanilla. Whatever vanilla you want. Tiny splash. And just a little more powdered sugar. Like a fourth of a cup more, I don't know. I don't know, we're not doing measurements here. And then you're just gonna mix it all up. So that's it for the frosting. Super easy. And I guess this isn't so bad doing this after it comes out of the oven because then you're not just staring at your cake waiting for it to cool down. This gives it time to cool down while you make its frosting. So this you can't over mix, but you do want it to be mixed really well. So just kind of keep doing this until all the clumps are gone. It'll come out super smooth. And um, I don't really know the consistency to tell you guys. Kind of, I don't, I honestly, maybe about this, I don't know. I'm not even going to guess. This is what it should look like. Like that. That's what your batter should look like for frosting. Just like that. If it doesn't look like that, it's too, if it's too runny, just add more powdered sugar. If it's too thick, just add a tiny bit more liquid. And you're just gonna have to figure it out. And if you screw it up, um, you're just gonna have to make it again. Darn. It's the best part about baking all the time and practicing is you just eat your mistake and then do it again. So once it looks like this, then you're gonna fold in these little guys. Dump the whole thing in if you can. And then just fold that in. And honestly, this cake tastes better the second day. Once it all has time to just kind of chill together, the frosting ends up tasting more and more Oreo-like. Oreo like they're not real Oreos um, the longer it sits so if it can make it to the second day in your house maybe have it for breakfast I don't know do what you want I had it for breakfast the next day and I'm still fine so all right there you go Oreo buttercream frosting Oreo buttercream frosting ready to go once your cake is cooled. All right, now if your cake's not cool, just take this time to put everything away. Clean as you go. You will thank yourself when you're done. So I'm gonna put all this away and then I'm gonna check on the cake. And it's done. So if you want to take all the little pieces that were on the edges that kind of um, are a little flaky, just kind of, I don't know, just kind of go like this and they'll fall off and if they don't it's whatever it doesn't have to be perfect all right we've got our frosting and this is super technical so watch carefully you're going to take the frosting and you're just going to dump piles of it on your cake just like that did you guys catch that and you're going to do almost all the frosting and then you're going to not let that go to waste. Smooth it out, which is why having a spatula is super helpful because I don't, it just makes life easier. I would assume everybody has one. If not, just go grab one real quick before you start this recipe. And you're going to be gentle, but it's not going to, it's not like super fragile, it's slippery. So just kind of smooth it out and you're going to try to get all the way to the edge because whatever is not, does not have frosting on it, it's going to kind of cave in a little bit. So just try to make sure it goes all the way to the edges and try to make it even and yeah. So like so, and then just leave a little bit 
of frosting. So on the top of your cake, you can just do like a layer, like a little layer across the top of the cake with a few Oreos on top. Um, if you don't want to do that, just use all the frosting. Um, I'm going to leave that up to you. All right. So good enough, I think. Now for the rolling. If you've ever made sushi, this will be super easy. It's the same style. So you're just going to um, that's not necessary, but it was bugging me. You're just going to take this part and you do use the paper. So um, just kind of roll it over and you're just going to squish it down like that for the first one. And you can kind of just plump it up. Just make sure it's like kind of close and tight like that. Sorry, this is not a good angle. Um, let's try again. Also, this is okay because this is going to be on the inside. Try to do it quickly though because the longer you let it sit, the more that's going to happen. But it is okay. So if that does start to happen, don't freak out. Um, I'm just going to try to find you guys a more suitable angle. And you're just coming along for the ride. So, okay. I think that, whoa, is going to tip over. All right. Just bear with me. Please stand by. All right, good enough. All right. Um, yeah, so let's try to get this in here. Sorry. Uh, stand by. I wish I could put in what well, I could put in. Uh, I could edit this out, but um, I, I like baking more than I like editing and cooking more than I like editing. So y'all are just going to bear with me while I get this set up. All right, now we're ready. Um, okay, so you're just going to keep rolling it. And you're just going to kind of squish it down a little bit and peel this up and do it again. You can pull it closer to you and roll it a little bit. Squish it down a tiny bit. Not hard. You're not pressing hard. Very gently. Um, and then just kind of pull it in. So make sure it's all even. And if you fuck it up, you just eat it. It'll be fine. It just won't look that pretty. But it's actually not very hard. You're just going to kind of smooth over it. You're just making sure it's all tight. And almost done. And if it cracks a little bit, whatever, shit happens. You just have to keep practicing. All right, done. And then just to make it easy, this is the easiest cleanup you will ever have. Um, and that's it. And then you can actually, um, we have these plates, they're just square plates because I like to plate food so these come in really handy and it's actually quite perfect because the cake fits very nicely on these so it's just the initial transferring of it done all right on the center and that's it and you can actually still kind of try to form it a little bit once it's done and that's it now, clean up, ta-da, you can take a little bit of the frosting, or a lot, I think it looks nice if it's just kind of right down the middle, um, just kind of frost it, and if there's extra frosting, you just eat it with a spoon, or with another cookie, um, I did that, and... I highly recommend it. So, do what you want. I'm just giving you ideas. Okay, good enough. Now it's good enough. Then you're just gonna take a few Oreos and cut them. Um, if you just cut them straight down, they're gonna break like that. So, you can actually saw them back and forth a little bit. 
and it helps to not break them in half. And then just place them on top like so. I mean, and if you're sick of me by now, you could just turn the video off and figure it out. It's not hard, but you might want to wait for the last part because that part is a good idea. So the Oreos, then you're going to take a little bit of the powdered sugar that I put away and you're going to need one of these. It's a tea thing. I don't know what they're really called, but it's for loose leaf tea. And this is what I use to dust things with powdered sugar. So you just put some powdered sugar in it and you just gently shake it over the top. And it's like it's snowing sugar all over your beautiful cake. Ta-da! All right, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. I know the videos are long, but that's the way it goes on this channel. So here you go. Nice, amazing Oreo cake. So that's it. I hope you guys liked it. And if you enjoy it, let me know if you make it. I would love to hear how it works out for you. That's it for this time. Um, I hope you enjoy your not health food, super full of sugar, awesome not Oreo cake. I don't know what the hell I'm going to put in the title. So, yeah. Okay. So leave a comment if you try it. I'd love to hear. And if you think that one of your friends would enjoy it too, I guess share it with them. Uh, share it, like it, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Um, the token things that we all say at the end of our videos. Um, so yeah. Oh, and then also for the frosting, if you don't want to use Oreos or you can't find them or whatever, you can do instead of adding water or non-dairy milk, um, just add some jam, whatever jam you like. I've done it with strawberry jam and it's actually really good. You just do the powdered sugar and jam together and it makes this awesome like fruit frosting. Um, so just play with it. You don't have to add the Oreos. You can make so many different kinds. You can put peanut butter in there. You can do the different jams. Like I said, just play with it and have fun. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.